dear participants uh, today is the 12th session of national workshop on research methodologies in geography and uh, it is uh, really a great pleasure to welcome and introduce dr bala subramanni k uh, sir on behalf of all the organizing institutions all the collaborating institutions uh, i welcome you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you dear participants dr bala subramanni uh, is working as an assistant professor in the department of geography of school of earth sciences of central university of tamil nadu he was born in 1982 in an agrarian village of kannur district of south india he earned bachelor's in geography from bharti dasan university with first rank and master's degree in geography from madurai kamraj university with first rank and distinction he had cleared national eligibility test uh, for lecturership in 2005 conducted by UGC New Delhi he started his career as a special data engineer in a private software company uh, and he worked there for a period of 2006, 2006 to 2009 he handled various 3d mapping projects with a capacity uh, as a uh, of a team leader later he moved to madurai kamraj university to serve as a guest lecturer he was joined bharti dasan university in 2011 and worked as an assistant professor until join joining the central university of tamil nadu in, in 2017 he taught courses related to physical geography disaster risk management and geo informatics to msc as well as mtech mphil and phd students he has completed doctoral level research on evaluation of land and water resources of semi arid watershed for sustainable development at madurai kamraj university in 2016 he has presented papers and own best paper awards and appreciations he has published uh, various research papers in the reputed journals at international level he has reviewed global edition of geography books published by pearson education limited and school education textbooks of government of tamil nadu he was trained at indian institute of remote sensing national institute of disaster management and gis tda Ministry of Science and Technology Bangkok he delivered more than 60 invited talks in conferences seminars workshops uh, and various programs organized by various institutes uh, throughout india he is actively participating as a board of studies examiner examiner subject expert in various universities colleges he extended his contribution to the professional societies including isrs igs gsi and coordinated various programs he is the university coordinator of irs outreach program uh, and he is actively engaging engaged in organization of such programs he is the recipient of eng geographer award from national association of geographers india and young scientist fellowship from tnsc st government of tamil nadu to carry out research at indian institute of sciences and technology his current research focus is on exploring applications of geospatial technologies in integrated risk assessment watershed modeling and land use planning with this very brief introduction once again uh, i welcome dr bala subramanni k on behalf of all the organizing institutions and all the participants and i request dr bala subramanni k to enlighten the participants regarding geographic data analysis and i am sure that dr bala is very 
much expertise in the area of uh, GIS and remote sensing. So uh, his focus may be related to data analysis using modern technology. Over to Dr. Bala Subramanike. Uh, sir, please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. I am audible. Yes, sir. You are very yeah. much audible. Yeah, very much yeah. audible. So thanks for the invitation. First of all, I would like to thank um, all the organizers of this national workshop workshop on research methodologies in geography. I gone through the brochure, uh, lecture details, and even the arrangement, all uh, you know, on par with the world standards and. Uh, of course, this kind of workshops, uh, especially longer duration workshops, are required to inculcate um, various uh, um, aspects in the research methodology of geography. Of course, uh, participants may like um, witness the vigorousness uh, on um, various aspects of research methodology, but still uh, the longer day um, or longer duration um, workshops um, sometimes hit uh, you are or hinder your uh, like uh, time and uh, following up uh, the sessions may be a little bit difficult during uh, the workshop duration but uh, of course uh, this recorded versions may help you to play back and uh, will enrich your understanding i uh, assuming that uh, most of you uh, have some exposure on uh, geographical data in one way or other way you are using it for your research or for your teaching or for even uh, like day-to-day uh, -day activities okay. so I'm not going to deviate much uh, from uh, what traditionally you are uh, understanding about uh, the geographic data rather I just give a flavor of uh, how this modern uh, like uh, technologies uh, assuming or like visualizing uh, the geographic data analysis. Uh, my lecture may not be a, a visual treat, uh, rather uh, it would be a conceptual uh, uh, like a discussion. Okay, uh, I will share my screen first, then um, I will go through. In between, if you have any questions, you can ask. Otherwise, at the end, we will have a discussion. Hope my screen is visible to you now. Yes, sir. It is clearly visible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I given this uh, like uh, topic uh, by the organizer. I am thankful to him uh, as well as other uh, Patil sir and other members uh, for um, uh, like um, motivating me to. Uh, go through some uh, like conceptual area for geographic data analysis and of course um, uh, this lecture will help me to recall whatever uh, I did for the past like 15 years uh, on uh, geographical data analysis so uh, this lecture points collected from various uh, like uh, textbooks and uh, uh, renowned uh, like uh, uh, research articles or programs but uh, the explanation or uh, the uh, examples uh, given to you all from my personal experience okay. so well, I don't want to start uh, immediately to geographic data analysis uh, before which we have to or we must understand the importance of uh, a map okay. Uh, this is the map uh, I prepared for my institute, uh, especially for a student's handbook okay, to understand the various building in the campus and uh, we, we uh, our campus is bifurcated into two by the river Veta. Uh, so uh, certain futures of this campus are certain futures of this campus the opposite people may not aware. So for which then we need a very generalized uh, map okay, which is uh, prepared and uh, circulated to all. Uh, other than map, uh, you can't imagine to explain um, uh, the entities or the phenomena or the futures 
available or exist in the campus okay so this is the powerful medium compared to uh, any other uh, technique or any other way uh, to explain the spatial complexity or real world phenomena uh, uh, most of you i hope uh, from geography discipline so you know about uh, maps or uh, abstractions of real world phenomena so this uh, abstraction or spatial representation of the environment is uh, very much essential uh, especially in initial days for uh, scientists or academicians or for uh, teachers but now even for a uh, common man okay and uh, you you may not surprise in future uh, you will find uh, a yeah, app uh, spatial app for uh, baking okay so where we can get good amount of like bakers may use the app and they will like search for locations where they will get a good amount of like money they could be able to cal like calculate easily okay and of course 10 years back when i visit any place say for example i visited the ratnagiri exactly like 10 years back but at the time i just like used the friends contact to understand where i have to get down where i have to go etc uh, etc et but now this google uh, uh, maps will solve uh, so many like um, day to day uh, problems and of course uh, uh, now all my like um, newer visit to newer areas are planned with the help of uh, google map before there of course there are bits and bits but still major part uh, taken care by this uh, google map because map is powerful that we have to understand and map uh, are great ways of displaying geographical data okay here i want to connect the geographical data okay uh, when you want to do analysis uh, with the geographical data uh, then finally what you have to do it is you have to display your geographical data whatever analysis you did whether it is a simple statistics or spatial autocorrelation no doubt about it the final visualization or the final like a communication should be map okay so maps are really a great way for geographers even for others to display geographical associated data of course summarizing uh, the real world phenomena uh, into map format is challenging but still uh, this kind of summarizing uh, like uh, definitely convey a very complex and important information in a clear and compact manner to the audience okay. this is very important uh, other way otherwise uh, we have to read a lot okay so a single map can save uh, reading uh, yeah like thousands of line you can quote okay uh, so this is the uh, like uh, power of uh, map uh, apart from scientists apart from academicians now everyone likes map okay people likes more and like more and more maps even from like ancient period but the amount of like utilization of maps uh, earlier it was uh, higher than um, especially during uh, great voyages okay. if you want to discover an unknown area then you need uh, uh, a map no doubt about it and later and uh, somehow uh, like uh, we guided by uh, the informations by the agencies or by the textbooks or other kind of representation but now especially after introduction of google maps and again we regain the utilization of like maps by more and more people because it will uh, helpful for three aspects one is the localization okay so where the objects are presented or exist what objects exist okay and how this object is like bigger or smaller or brighter or darker than other objects how this arrangement or rearrangement uh, helps the governance okay so like uh, this maps will answer these three broad aspects localization comparison and planning okay so that's why uh, for any any one of this uh, people try to use maps or people try to like maps say for example identify a new place or uh, comparing one place with other place 
or uh, uh, planning a place or planning an area where map is essential. Of course, uh, for map making, nowadays uh, people use GIS. I no need to introduce uh, or define the word GIS. You know that geographic information system initially uh, intended for uh, uh, spatial analysis, but still uh, no data presented in a digital form. So most of the time our uh, fathers, forefathers did for data conversion from analog data to digital data and uh, tag the attributes. This 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 how they spend their like most of their time. Okay. But they uh, like they also did uh, spatial analysis, but contribution of spatial analysis in the historical past is like uh, very much limited, okay? especially with the help of GIS. But if you look at now, uh, the data conversion uh, just like reversed because now we are acquiring data in a digital medium directly. You no need of converting or digitizing uh, uh, the things rather you can get uh, almost all the data in digital format now. Okay. And attribute tagging also, uh, you can do a joining or like a relating or some other uh, semi-automated operations where you can connect your data with other data sets and you can like uh, tag it. Okay. Uh, so we like uh, took very minimal hour for data conversion and attribute tagging. Now we have enough hour or enough time for spatial analysis. Okay. Uh, so that's why now if you look at the publications, most of the publications are on analysis. But uh, 30, 40 years before, if you look at most of the like um, GIS related papers or research works, just simply like explain how to like code the data in computer and how to like handle the data and etc cetera, etc cetera. now you will not find these aspects rather you will find more and more of spatial analysis okay. and of course we replaced almost all traditional analysis now um, uh, especially in industrial area i'm talking about around the 95 to like 99 percentage of all spatial analysis now carried out by GIS or related technologies. Fine. So uh, we want to uh, like uh, do analysis. Uh, of course, I told you that uh, after analysis, you have to visualize it or you have to map it. Uh, so it is very essential to understand uh, the characteristics of geographic data uh, before analysis, after analysis especially after analysis for visualization, before analysis for like determining what kind of analysis we have to take. Uh, if you look at uh, geographic data, broadly you can categorize into qualitative and quantitative. I'm not going in detail much this one because you know about it, the definition of qualitative and quantitative. And of course, uh, both are important and both are required. There is no like uh, superior or inferior both are parallel even I just use uh, like the same line because both are equally important. Uh, certain time uh, um, qualitative data uh, uh, like helps like uh, to visualize the information or geographic data certain other time a uh, quantitative like a uh, processing is required and of course either of quantitative or qualitative if you go for visualization or go for data collection for analysis, then you have to broadly think it of these three entities. Okay. Uh, what are they? Point, line, or area. This is just like our uh, RGB, okay. red, green, and blue. Although we have uh, lakhs of colors, millions of colors, okay. can able to our printer, normal day-to-day -day printer nowadays, inkjet printer can able to produce thousands of colors. Okay. But although thousands of colors we are producing, but the ink cartridge what we are using are three. Okay. Uh, but depend upon primary additives or secondary additives, if it is primary additives, RGB, red, blue, and green. Uh, whereas if it is secondary additives, you, you know that CMYK, cyan, magenta, and yellow, okay, including black. So the reason is, these combinations will produce uh, like many colors, either of RGB or CMYK, 
produces like many uh, like colors similar to that whatever geographic data we have or whatever visualization you are trying to do and you can employ only three entities that are point line or area okay. and of course combination of these three would produce uh, like uh, voluminous of information and uh, helps to like uh, represent very complex information of course there are techniques to visualize a point there are techniques to visualize line entities there are techniques to visualize area entities and uh, of course we can combine all the three and produce like wide variety of maps similarly similarly of uh, geographic uh, uh, data that is uh, like uh, what i say uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, and another important uh, nature or characteristics of geographic data are discrete and continuous this is very important okay and quantitative and qualitative almost all cartographic textbooks used to like explains or up, at least uh, uh, there are like words about it this discrete and continuous uh, earlier uh, not given much importance but after this evolution of gis and most of the gis textbooks if you look at whether uh, uh, there is no like word of quantitative or qualitative but at least you could find the word of discrete and continuous discrete are objects continuous are fields okay i just uh, simply say that the discrete are individual objects say for example um, the locations of major cities okay so all the cities are located as point uh, just like this map okay uh, unrepresented independently whereas continuous are uh, say for example rainfall okay or temperature or elevation or sea like uh, level salinity or our uh, sea surface temperature okay. which means that Uh, the phenomena is uh, continuous and uh, either increasing or decreasing gradually not drastically okay uh, so most of the uh, natures uh, uh, entities are following uh, uh, continuous of phenomena whereas most of man made objects like uh, following a uh, discrete phenomena but uh, this is a crude definition there are like uh, uh, uh discrete objects in natural like a domain there are continuous objects in human domain as well okay so uh, the important thing is that when you want to like um, uh, do analysis geographic data analysis uh, you have to decide first whether you want to do quantitative or qualitative and second thing is that whether you want to do a discrete analysis or continuous analysis okay so if you decided this dichotomy uh, then you can go ahead with the, uh like uh, analysis as well as for visualization and keep in mind that uh, most of the practical applications involve qualitative quantitative discrete and continuous combination of all okay so you can't do uh, like any powerful analysis with a single uh, like uh, data type already i told uh, the power of map is uh, abstracting the real world phenomena okay. so uh, graphical uh, data abstraction is very very important for map making when you want to graphical data abstraction as i told you then you have to uh, like uh, take it up either object view or field view or discrete view or continuous view okay uh, this uh, approach either of object approach or field approach or continuous approach then you have to keep in mind the three characteristics that is your objects are uh, like uh, phenomena should be identifiable relevant and describable identifiable in the sense uh, the object should exist on the ground in 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 a real world okay if you can't see it then you can't collect it you can't store it you can't analyze it you can't visualize it okay so uh, say for example uh, Mm, if you talk about um, uh, human psychology okay or psychological uh, like uh, phenomena if you can't identify it okay 
then it's very difficult to like uh, collect it store it and map it okay. uh, i ca i can't uh, like uh, map it at the uh, like a human uh, like a uh, thinking okay or human uh, like a uh, senses because identifying those it's very difficult uh, even if you talk about uh, say for example uh, uh, like uh, uh, sensing uh, nature of a dog or pet animal, pet animals. Okay. It's very difficult to see us, yes, so it is very difficult to collect data and represent it. But keep in mind, that there are instruments, there are sensors. Okay. Uh, say for example, uh, outside my home, uh, I am look at uh, vegetation. I can't see the temperature of the vegetation. I don't know what is the temperature of that vegetation. But the sensor helps me. Okay. So the sensor helps me. I am using a thermal infrared or like a, um, thermal uh, like mid infrared or other thermal like uh, uh, instruments. Okay. So using thermal instruments, I am measuring the temperature of the uh, like uh, leaves. Now I am able to see because the sensor recorded and given me. Okay. I can able to see it, so I can able to record it, I can able to map it. Okay. This is very important. This is how we are lacking. Okay. Uh, where uh, the persons from other scientific domains, especially from physics or like engineering or other like domains, are able to do better uh, like uh, geographical uh, data analysis because, because they are handling more instruments, okay. more data collection, more geographical data collection, more uh, like analysis more applications, more mapping, more research. Okay. We are like losing our space. Uh, this mapping space is our space, but within that space we are losing our space because of uh, this lacking. This is very important and serious issue. So try to learn uh, or develop uh, skills in order to extract more and more identifiable data. Okay. Uh, so that is very important. So unless otherwise we know handling uh, various instruments for geographic data collection, then you can't do it. How long you are going to rely on uh, like uh, this uh, satellite images? Uh, that too with the preliminary approach like visual image interpretation or just classifying using supervised or unsupervised. Okay. Those are all uh, like the era end. Okay, so now if you want to do some good analysis and if you want to do a better geographical data abstraction then we have to use or we have to handle uh, very sophisticated uh, like instruments. Okay, this is first. And second one is uh, the relevant. Okay, of course there are data that you can uh, like uh, collect with the sensors or even your naked eye can able to like look at but not all the data can be able to map. Okay? Uh, say for example, uh, the genome or like molecular aspects or uh, chemical reactions. Okay? It is very complex, it is very difficult. In a, within a sample you could find uh, the atoms, but if you look at uh, uh, yeah, space, and if you want to like uh, map it, uh, the uh, spatial clusters of atom, you can't do it. Uh, it, it is uh, even it is not relevant to geographical data abstraction. So keep in mind, although you are using instruments and collecting data, not all the data uh, may be relevant of geographical data abstraction. That you have to separate it. Certain data can be uh, like a map, but certain data cannot be. Okay, so that you have to distinguish it. And based on that, you can go ahead for uh, like uh, geographic data analysis then all your data should be or must be describable. Okay. So characteristics or attributes of what we are like uh, identifying, what we felt uh, like uh, relevant is very, very important. Okay. Unless you know uh, what kind of uh, like a phenomena it is, what kind of object it is, what kind of field it is, then you can't like uh, do abstraction. So geographical data abstraction also required equivalent skills of interpretation of what data you have collected. Okay, that is very important. If you know these three and if you are familiar with these three, then the sky is the limit for you.
for advanced geographic data analysis. Uh, and while uh, doing uh, geographic data analysis and uh, various uh, complications you must encounter uh, because um, of various reasons. Say for example, um, objects are not always what they are appear to be. Okay. Always keep on changing. And it may vary uh, the characteristics perception from person to person. I appear or I interpret in different manner, you may be interpreted in different manner. Okay. Uh, then third person will interpret in another dimension. Uh, and of course, the uh, original characteristics of object undergone changes always. Okay. Uh, last year, uh, some, some kind. This year, some other kind. Next year, some other kind. Okay. So like the objects, not always what they appear to be. It will like uh, change, just like our dress. Okay. While uh, purchasing it looked new or uh, with uh, some color or some like a characteristic after some times then it may. And again change vary from one object to another. Then objects are usually multidimensional. I said that when I look at a tree I could not able to understand its like a temperature. So I am using um, a thermal infrared to understand the temperature of the tree. Uh, now I visualize the data. I look at the temperature alone, whereas uh, the person from uh, like uh, botany or plant biology uh, look at uh, their molecular like uh, changes or their uh, like uh, chlorophyll generation, their uh, like uh, biomass richness. Okay, a person from head chemistry will look at chemical changes. A person from physics will look at. Uh, that um, the radiation or other kind of uh, transfer of energy. So the objects are usually multidimensional and each will look at in a different angle. Okay, So this is very like a complicated issue. So what we have to do it and you have to decide what kind of dimension you want to like analyze it. Okay? Accordingly you have to consider because a complete cover is not possible. One side object is changing, other side object has multidimensional and there are complications that uh, the object sometimes uh, do not move or like change okay. uh, but whereas uh, you have to like uh, represent uh, in a map in a different manner I just like uh, make you clear uh, and second here that the certain objects uh, uh, look like uh, static but over a period of time uh, it may like a uh, degraded or upgraded okay. but whereas in our map or in our analysis or in our like uh, presentation uh, you could not able to like uh, make it uh, or you do not move or change those uh, object okay uh, say for example a building your building appears uh, that uh, aerial, aerial extent you may be capture and map it even I shown you the campus map I just like captured with the help of uh, like a field observation and satellite data I captured I uh, like given some color and etc but really that object undergone uh, like uh, many uh, uh, dynamics okay. uh, you can't frequently change your map to show the dynamic behavior of the object okay. uh, around surround the, the building uh, the trees are growing and the new like uh, parking space come up and parking space like a uh, detached or new uh, like uh, some anaxara attached uh, but still you can't dynamically change your map rather you have to like uh, uh, take some interval you can uh, notify the changes okay so because the spatial object the abstracted objects do not move or change but real object used to like move and change okay so this uh, like uh, representing the dynamism of uh, real objects representing in a static map is very difficult but of course now we have uh, google earth or like uh, mm, uh, web portals which consider this aspect as well but still there are uh, like uh, uh, 
API points or we call it as a reference dates. Uh, Google Earth, if you look at, you can go with the historical image, but not for every day, not for every hour, not for every minute. Rather, within a year, three, four image you could find, which means that only those uh, like uh, samples are available. Okay. Even there are changes between all the like, uh, like maps. And objects do not have a simple geometries, but whereas all our abstractions will follow simple geometries. We do have very simple uh, like uh, geometries. Even uh, say for example, if I look at a uh, uh, yeah, uh, digitizing tool, uh, I could find a square, a rectangle, circle, ellipse, okay, or some sphere. Uh, only this kind of a triangle, only this kind of uh, uh, geometries I have to digitize. Okay. I don't have uh, like um, uh, very complex uh, geometries. Although we have the tool called Polygon, your own, you can like uh, prepare, you can digitize or you can like capture it. But again, while capturing, it will create like a lot of confusions. Because the same objects will share it's uh, like uh, space with others. If you look at a tree, below you could find some uh, like a phenomena, say for example, yeah, soil, uh, above a particular soil, red soil, soil, for example, above which you have a tree. Okay, So I want to capture both. What you will do? You will capture soil as a polygon, entire soil, above which you will capture your tree as maybe of uh, a sign and symbol or uh, the canopy you can capture it. If you are capturing canopy, you can show either canopy or the soil. Okay. Uh, if you overlay, either you have to one, you have to put on top, which means that one information will subdue the other. Okay. And if you calculate the area, uh, say for example, I'm excluding the canopy area and the polygon, then I will lose my potential information because canopy size is different, but trunk size of the tree is different and beneath that also soil is there. Okay, So your calculations will have very complex geometry, which can be included, which can be excluded. And again, uh, like uh, my, your uh, canopy or bottom of the tree, all uh, difficulties we have to face it. It's very difficult uh, to solve this complex problem with the simple geometries. And all the objects are dependent on scale of analysis, different scale of analysis. This is very important and of course cartographic principle you must have aware about it. Uh, depend upon scale, even uh, the data collection, the presentation, the way of analysis all will change. Uh, so scale of analysis is very important. Say for example, now we are doing a, a coastal vulnerability assessment, integrated coastal vulnerability assessment for um, entire coast of Tamil Nadu uh, by uh, like uh, uniquely defined a, a plain region with watershed approach and uh, we are analyzing it. Uh, we aimed for very local level uh, characterization of uh, like uh, disaster risk but the data is available uh, at minimal scale is the village. So, so uh, we forced to follow uh, the village and wards for assimilation of uh, different uh, socioeconomic data sets and visualize or uh, uh, and uh, like analyze it and visualize it. Okay, which means that uh, the characteristics of disaster risk vary from one household to another household. Okay, but it is not possible to like show it because of uh, the like scale of analysis or scale of data available. Okay. Uh, so what we have to do, we have to aggregate or we have to generalize uh, in a village scale or ward scale okay. and uh, you can map it, which means that while aggregating or while generalizing it, potential information you will lose it. Okay or you will do over exaggeration, but still no other go. Okay. Then um, the final is geographic data always of fuzzy. It don't have a discrete boundaries. This is very important. How do you say uh, the forest started from this point and forest uh, like uh, 
attain a very density at this point and end okay. uh, even if you talk about uh, temperature how do you say like uh, the boundary of two climatic regions it's very difficult mm, uh, even uh, the delimitation of coast sorry land and sea it is very difficult high tide some level maintained and uh, like some land area occupied by sea low tide land area will emerge and you will have lesser proportion of like a sea area especially in coastal regions you could find this complexity okay whenever you do any analysis with wetland or coastal you could find the this uh, what we call it as issue okay so what i'm trying to say here is uh, there is no sharp boundary okay, between one object and another object and all uh, like a fuzzy boundary there are of course there are some like a discrete boundaries say for example edge of road and those of like uh, phenomena are of like uh, uh, human made okay and of course all natures phenomena most of the natures phenomena not all most of the natures phenomena will follow uh, continuous which means fc okay it's very uh, very difficult to say uh, this is the end point and this is the starting point okay or uh, simply say all uh, like uh, uh, or most of the natural natures objects have intermediate boundaries uh, now i understand the, the complex in uh, like uh, geographical data and of course after although i have a complex but still i managed i try to like collect data okay when you want to collect data then you can like store your data under four measures nominal measures ordinal measures interval measures and ratio measures i think this figure will give you a better idea about it nominal measures are uh, a qualitative that's what we discussed very initially okay. say for example these are all uh, schools these are all hospitals these are all uh, some petrol pumps or atm machines okay all unique different okay i captured separately and uh, assigned some point symbol i just like uh, tagged it i just give a legend that circle schools triangle petrol pumps etc okay. so this is called a nominal so uh, either of qualitative or quantitative data um, you can represent uh, with the nominal measures okay you can describe uh, these are all uh, say for example schools and um, colleges or hospitals all different uh, qualitative nature you can like uh, map it as a point say for example river road you can distinguish it qualitatively <laughs> and different land uses you can describe it and even if it is a continuous uh, data say for example um yeah crop okay agricultural like crop area crop there are different crops and this is one crop this is another crop this is fallow land but entire area covered with some agricultural practices which means a continuous operations so you can use a continuous approach with the help of grid gridded like uh, approach normally in uh, raster data you know that pixels each pixel you can consider as a minimal uh, like a unit accordingly you can categorize it or traditionally in cartographic we call it as minimal mappable units okay so using a minimal mappable or deciding minimal mappable units you can prepare a geographic data matrix in okay, it with x y domain and you can categorize it okay. this is for nominal if data is ordered say for example the same like uh, data uh, uh, uh but with some uh, like uh, quantitative values what quantitative values that uh, this uh, like uh, say for example these are all the uh, points which have some protection or which have some like uh, like quantitative measure say for example strength of the schools 
based on strength of the schools you can order it these are all big schools and these are all small schools okay so the location is same but based on some attributes you can, you are ordering the data okay that you can represent if it is a point as points uh, say for example this river is uh, uh, compared to other rivers it is a major river this road is compared to other river it is a major road uh, likewise this land use also say for example forest all forest but here its density is high here density is less moderate here density is less here no forest so like you can use some uh, like uh, attribute to order your data and you can represent it in a discrete domain as well as in continuous domain in continuous domain again based on your uh, like uh, uh, data then you can order it and you can give some color and you can represent it this is a higher density and this is lower density etc interval or ratio measures are higher order which means that instead of taking absolute value here both are absolute okay here it is based on relative okay what relative say for example uh, i am mapping i want to map uh, the uh, student strength with respect to national average okay compared to national average which schools have more uh, like a strength which schools have less strength, less strength that i can make it uh, with the help of ratio measures or like uh, or you can take uh, the uh, school strength of india and classify into different classes and for each classes you can map it okay this is as per this this okay so like uh, say for example here also based on uh, the average conditions of uh, a river and road you can classify it average conditions of forest density you can classify it like if you are comparing your data with some other data and producing a relative information that becomes uh, like ratio measures or uh, take your uh, absolute values and make it uh, some uh, class groups and representing it, uh, representing it then that become interval like measures so um, uh, so these two are absolute and these two are like a relative okay so now we discussed a discrete continuous quantitative qualitative and uh, uh, here absolute and relative okay so the combination of all these things will decide your uh, like a data analysis and data presentation uh, this <clears throat> geographic data um, uh, sometimes we also call it called a spatial data this is very uh, frequently used uh, uh, what i say word keyword for uh, geographic data spatial data this spatial data are really special okay uh, so whatever we discussed uh, whether it is discrete or continuous or qualitative or quantitative or absolute or relative then uh, you can uh, like abstract it collect it and you can do many analysis okay or we call it as a spatial data analysis there are uh, like uh, many analysis exist later i will uh, explain you few but still uh, i am summarizing all the potential of uh, spatial data analysis and uh, associated limitations under this slide okay um, nowadays many people look at geography because of a phenomena that we call it as spatial autocorrelation okay uh, i am um, collaborating with uh, epidemiology departments and uh, life science departments archaeology departments and even like uh, physics um, and chemistry department peoples uh, because of uh, this phenomena that is called our uh, spatial autocorrelation each and every data on the space related with other uh, like the geographical data okay. so each geographical data have association with the, other geographical data that we have to correlate it and identify it okay uh, sometimes that correlation must, must exist empirically based on that you can like correlate it but in most of the cases me we may not uh, like aware about it it is hidden okay so that uh, hidden information you can uh, like uh, 
uh, uh, do auto correlation with the help of uh, like a spatial data and you can like uh, do uh, or like suggest the remedies or like a plans say for example uh, this um, cholera outbreak in uh, uh, london broad streets in 18 like 50s 150 years before uh, this uh, um, special autocorrelation uh, understood by uh, the father of epidemiology as well as he is also uh, the snowman he is also called as father of geography so he sorry father of gis he like consider that the cholera outbreak cases um, cholera cases and a particular location associated okay just by simple mapping okay so he mapped all the cases cholera cases and he found that all the cholera cases are clustered in a particular region or particular locality so those are all uh, uh, getting water from particular pipe or particular like well uh, uh, that hand pump so the people who are all drinking water from the hand pump got uh, like a cholera infection what he did he just like went and dismantled uh, the handle of the pump and cholera cases are subsided okay subsidized so this is uh, then thereafter this power of like a spatial autocorrelation power of gis power of geographical data analysis really interested by various people okay so uh, like uh, yeah simple uh, demonstration from that period to now we have many studies that explains the spatial autocorrelation phenomena and of course now many people working on this field especially in changing climatic scenarios okay we are trying to like associate uh, changes of temperature or changes of rainfall with the changes in other geographical domain okay that's what we are associating climate change and other associated impacts second one is uh, the adjacency okay spatial data it's not simply uh, like um, deal to the problem rather it considers the surrounding features as well okay. uh, say for example i want to do a groundwater recharge study you can't take it uh, uh, simply your area or your ward or your village and you can like say that uh, the groundwater potential is good or bad okay rather you have to think it off okay so how this area getting water and how it is discharging what is the hydrological like cycle of that area and adjusting adjacent like a components you have to consider it okay this is very important while uh, mapping we consider only our area but whereas in reality you have to consider the adjacent area as well and of course this adjacency concept only give you a lot of analysis say for example um, like um, buffering okay or uh, uh, like influence of uh, one industry in surrounding villages okay uh, that like adjacency phenomena is very important and of course uh, already i told the problem with the fuzzy boundaries if you look at the coastal areas or coastal boundary or forest boundary it's not about simply a boundary of forest again the forest is like adjacent with some other land use okay if you are drawing a limitation of forest that line is not for not only for forest but also for adjacent phenomena okay so that uh, like adjacency also we are carrying with the geographic data analysis interaction once you have adjacency then uh, definitely you have interaction Okay. Uh, already I told you, say for example, you have um, yep, industry and you have pollution, then how uh, the interaction happened between industry and surrounding like environments, environment. That interaction you can like model it, you can like understand it and you can like uh, visualize it. Okay. So this um, um, as, uh, like adjacency and interaction are uh, uh, very frequently uh, deal the problem by geographers whereas spatial autocorrelation is by many subject domains whereas this too may be very exclusive to us 
uh, in initial days but now the potential also like expanded to other domains neighborhood and proximity this is also very important uh, especially to understand the interaction okay the interaction always have a distance decay function or we call it as a gravity potential model or uh, what we call it as a distance decay theory okay. uh, or we call it as inverse distance like uh, uh, weightage or, or like uh, a matrix uh, closest to, to the future more the interaction away from the future less the interaction okay so that is the principle behind this neighborhood analysis so when you want to do uh, interaction analysis you don't need to give same weightage of uh, yeah, uh, like uh, building a very close by uh, to industry and building very uh, like away from the building both to have a different exposure which is determined by the neighborhood okay so that you can analyze with the help of neighborhood uh, like uh, functions or neighborhood approach and uh, you can use a proximity approach also that is called the buffering approach okay so 10 meter buffer 20 meter buffer 100 meter buffer 200 meter buffer then you can understand the, the interaction within uh, that proximal area okay uh, this is again of course earlier we called it as hinterland approach okay? that hinterland approach now we call it as uh, like um, neighborhood and proximate approach uh, apart from this there are studies advanced studies which is summarizing the relationship of geographical data in matrices this is very important we call it as geographical data matrices uh, this is nothing but uh, representing uh, the relation of one geographical data with other geographical data in an xy domain rather than just deal as entities or like spatial objects or spatial entities you can consider as mathematical uh, like a domain or mathematical like interactions uh, say for example uh, this um, in transportation analysis okay uh, where is a person moving from one location to another location all his moving you can relate in a matrix form and you can identify which location he is frequently visiting okay? and which location is frequently visited by many people and which location is frequently interact with a particular uh, uh, like uh, other uh, location okay so all the thing you can able to summarize with the help of matrices approach that is also now powerful and of course now you with the help of Google Earth or Google Map you are estimating the distance between uh, like one location to another location because of these like uh, 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 matrices relationship okay it will quickly calculate on the cloud uh, the uh, distance between uh, like uh, one area and another area and summarizing it with uh, the people movement okay based on people movement you can understand the traffic okay based on that it will give you a timing estimated time okay estimated time you are getting because of this not only simply a uh, adjacency interaction or neighborhood but also with a relationship that is also important of course edge effects it is a serious issue but still we don't uh, have other options to like represent it okay but many works uh, potentially carried out uh, to understand the edge effects and uh, edge uh, effects also taken up as uh, like a uh, bone say for example image processing uh, especially to handle the edge uh, many techniques we have developed uh, and many techniques are being employed by uh, geographers or other special analysts for uh, understanding uh, the transition between one to other okay, or one uh, action to other action or one phenomena to another phenomena okay so that also like uh, handled very frequently by uh, or through spatial data so spatial data are really special for all these things and these are all the like analysis we are doing it naturally okay the name may be different the like area may be different the methodology may be different the approach may be different but the fundamental principle behind all our spatial analysis 
are related to spatial autocorrelation, adjacency, interaction, neighborhood proximity, and the geographic data matrices. In addition, edge effects. All these things can be handled powerfully in a GIS because GIS have geo-relational database models. We call it as a, re a geo-relational database management system, which is interlinking uh, attributes and uh, the spatial entities. These are all the districts of India, 640 districts I have digitized and I clubbed or linked the census data with that. Okay. So I want to identify what are the population, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the populist uh, districts. Population density is uh, higher in India. That uh, top 20 districts, I want to identify it. Okay. The moment I uh, click uh, the density in 2000, uh, say for example, for one, okay, in 2001 census data based on density, I could find that these are all the like uh, 20 districts or 30 districts have higher uh, like uh, values. Okay. This table will just give you numbers. You could not able to spatially visualize it or like uh, do the analysis I said. You can't do spatial auto correlation. You can't do adjacency. You can't do interaction. You can't do neighborhood. You can't create matrices. You can't understand edge effects. Okay. All these things required a special data. Okay. So this is the data we are normally collecting it and this is the way you can do analysis. Now I can I can say the autocorrelation, say for example, wherever you have uh, like uh, uh, flat plain, fertile uh, like uh, uh, landform or future, either of a coastal plain or like a reverend plain, okay, you could find more population density. And I can say that uh, 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 this coastal area have uh, much interaction uh, with the uh, neighboring regions. So this, these uh, districts have a higher uh, like uh, population densities or more uh, settlements than the interior parts. Okay. Uh, and I can say that uh, 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 I just like uh, relate it uh, or summarize it with that these regions have like more interaction than these isolated like districts. These isolated districts are interacted with more these neighborhoods. Okay, so this area, this like uh, uh, district will act as a hinterland, a front end of hinterland of this region. This Mumbai will, uh, this area will act a hinterland for Mumbai, and this area will act as a hinterland for like Kolkata. So like. Once you have a spatial like a data and you are uh, recording or encoding into spatial domain and you can apply all these things. Okay, so this is very important. Even you can identify the edge effects you can see here. The city is not like expanding this side because you have like edge effects. You have like a C. It is not possible to go. It, it will possible always towards this direction. Okay. So the rate of uh, like uh, change will be more in this coastal districts towards interior than the, this because it is growing constant in a concentric zone model. Okay, whereas this is uh, growing along uh, the major transportation line. Okay, so such kind of edge effects also you can able to understand. So all like geographical analysis you can able to do only when you like uh, put your data on spatial domain. And of course, we need a, a like a, a linked tables as well or linked database as well for easy uh, storing of data and managing. Say, for example, in this map, I want to change it into decadal growth rate. Just simple click, I can show. I want to change it to female population, uh, sorry, literacy rate. Then I can like within a click, I can able to do it. Because you have a database that is very powerful to store data and manipulate data and extract the data or information. Other side, you have like a power of spatial like a domain. If you link both the things through geo-relational data models, and of course, you can do wonders. What wonders you can do? You can do many analysis. For example, point pattern analysis. 
which includes the centrography, density-based point pattern measures, distance-based point pattern measures, nearest neighbor distance, and etc. So many analysis. Just I am few. I just list it out. If you look at these are all the points, and based on this point, you can able to understand which area. Okay. it's uh, have a preliminary distribution geographical distribution which direction it is distributing which direction it is going okay. uh, say for example i did an analysis to understand uh, uh, which uh, center or which like uh, uh, town or city may be ideal to develop as uh, uh, like uh, geographically center a capital okay, of india and it is found it is comes around the uh, like uh, uh north west of uh, hyderabad okay north west of hyderabad okay which which is considered as uh, like uh, geographically center okay uh, based on distribution of all major towns of india or major settlements of india okay if you look at the boundary of india the distance sorry the point may somewhere fall in like maharashtra but if you look at uh, the distribution of uh, uh, population or population density it will uh, like uh, fall near uh, like hyderabad okay uh, which is uh, like reflected in planning as well so why hyderabad like uh, developed uh, as a like a center for uh, uh, governance uh, for various institutions and other things because of this uh, like uh, uh, future geographical future that's what i said okay when you like uh, have a geographical data when you represent it on a domain and uh, uh, when Lagla you do analysis and you can able to get very uh, like Lagla powerful Lagla scientific Lagla. information okay. so Lagla. which is maybe of uh, based Lagla. on just khali kharab jala hai na sabun gele ko but you can also so do it based on like uh density or like a distance okay. uh how in the sense say for example uh, if you look at uh, the population density or like a distance uh, between uh, uh, that point or that location the other locations that also based on that also you can redefine it but keep in mind that this um, uh like uh, geographical uh, uh, data can be like uh, 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 performed various kind of uh, like uh, pattern analysis point pattern analysis line pattern analysis and area pattern analysis based on these principles all these are uh, like mathematical or statistical principle but you can work it on uh, like public sorry spatial domain this is other area another very powerful area now uh, geographical data is uh, analyzed that is called local statistics okay uh, you may heard about the word uh, hot spots okay so most of the hot spots are clustering analysis now we are doing it uh, with a statistics called gettys or uh, like uh, statistics or gi star statistics okay this uh, uh, this statistics okay or we call it as more an i values or gettys like a statistics based on p value you can able to understand you can able to like identify the clusters identify the hot spots of various phenomena uh, which is simply based on a local statistics what is local statistics just compare your point of interest with other points okay Uh, over a period of time or over a space whether you you could find uh, yeah, uh, correlation or not okay so that is called local statistics okay Let's say for example we attempted an analysis for alcohol consumption in india as well as tobacco consumption also we did so where this tobacco and alcohol consumption in india is clustered okay we found that uh, alcohol consumption is clustered over uh, northeast india and uh, like um, uh, between uh, uh, like uh, jharkhand and telangana especially hyderabad surrounding north of like hyderabad okay. so those re uh, regions are like uh, 
uh, clustered for uh, what we call it as alcohol consumption. Okay, even the coastal regions of Tamil Nadu also known for alcohol consumption. These are all the clusters of alcohol consumption. How we got it? We took uh, statistics of 640 districts, all the districts uh, uh, data, you know, just like uh, uh, added into uh, district boundaries and we applied uh, the GI statistics, okay? GI star statistics. We could found that uh, the uh, district surrounded by uh, the districts located uh, in the coastal parts of uh, Tamil Nadu or Northeast surrounded by high consumption district which means that all become a cluster okay whereas if you look at uh, Mumbai or uh, like uh, Delhi which is also have a, a higher amount of consumption alcohol consumption but neighboring like uh, districts don't have that much which means that it is not possible to form a cluster or hotspot okay only this urban factor here driving the higher consumption other than that nothing okay but whereas in this northeast, it is very peculiar. Okay, it's not about just a one uh, like a district or one community. Rather, the entire area uh, like have witnessed with the higher alcohol consumption, which means that there are different geographical associations with that. So, such kind of uh, like analysis we can able to do with the help of comparing our entity with neighboring entity. Uh, this uh, also helpful for geographically weighted regression. This is very important. Okay. Sometimes if you look at the forest and uh, uh, rainfall having association, okay, but what kind of association, how like real the association is, you can able to understand better with the geographically weighted regression. Okay. Uh, say for example, you have a rainfall with a very smaller area Although the amount of rainfall is higher, but the area is smaller, you could not find dense forest. Okay, uh, the entire region will not found with a dense forest. But whereas, uh, if you look at uh, an area which have moderate uh, like a rainfall, but the area uh, uh, receiving a moderate rainfall is very wider and throughout and very confined, where you could find the vigorousness of forest. It's not about simply uh, yeah, rainfall data and forest data, rather it is also of a geographical location. Okay. If you look at, uh, I visited the Meghalaya and I found uh, the Sirabunji and Mao Zindrum, those areas. Uh, you could not find uh, a thick forest like Western Ghats there. Okay. It is a barren earth, okay. which means that the amount of rainfall is high. Uh, the amount of like, uh, runoff also high, sediment tension also high. So what happened, the earth is like a very barren, that like a forest is not that much of thick, okay, rather water is like just runoff very quickly, okay. So what I'm trying to say, the geographical uh, regression, weighted regression and real uh, like a statistical reference, both are different. If you want to have a real picture, then uh, with the help of local statistics, you can imply geographical weighted regression. Interpolation, I know need to explain you much, many of you are aware about it that if you want to estimate uh, the unknown values from the known values, the uh, definite choice is interpolation. So for example, I have weather stations of 30 in my state, I want to identify the distribution of temperature in the state, then no other go, uh, then I have to use interpolation techniques. Either uh, a yeah, spline method or like inverse distance weighted method or Kirging method, any of the method you can imply depend upon the data characteristics and you can able to identify the unknown values. Okay. This is very powerful uh, because um, all the data collections are point based or most of the data collections are point based. Although the satellite data offer a field based data collection which means continuously cover the whole area but problem is you will get only the like uh, pixel information single pixel information uh, that uh, converting that pixel into some phenomena will give you some temperature or like rainfall or humidity or other things but it is not uh, like theoretically correct or sorry actually correct or ground uh, like correct uh, like 
at ground level it is it may not be correct okay because that uh, like a satellite is placed or sensor is placed on board some 600 700 km distance from the earth in between you have a lot of noises okay so uh, separating noises and getting information always have some uh, like uncertainty whereas ground based data are real okay so that uh, uh, if you want to like compare it or if you want to like analyze it then you have to do interpolation zonal operations and functions also very important uh, lo lo local statistics measure widely used for geographical data analysis it is nothing but uh, like considering your uh, location of data and surrounding like a uh, data values okay whereas global operations it's your uh, location data values and uh, the global uh, like uh, data global data in the sense uh, uh, say for example i am analyzing uh, the ground water recharge okay so based on some parameters that parameters uh, if you are estimated just with nearing uh, like uh, uh, existence of futures that we call it as a zonal okay you are estimating the ground water recharge for the entire uh, like a village or entire boundary that we call it as a global global will consider all the pixels are all the locations of what you inputted whereas local will consider only the surrounding features okay so used on this using using this you can do many many like uh, potential analysis through which you can able to understand many uh, hidden uh, like uh, geographical information apart this uh, like a uh, pattern analysis or like local statistics analysis we can do a general analysis like querying uh, like just like uh, querying uh, your geographical data using some uh, mm, mm, what we call it as sql structure the query language or special query language either of you can choose it or you can use uh, again of course this uh, neighboring data sets uh, or local statistics for creating buffer or create creation of any kind of interest area around an object okay and you can do uh, like uh, overlay analysis as well okay. of course overlay analysis uh, can be do just with the different layers but also with the different uh, like uh, local operations or point pattern operations okay so those are all very advanced but uh, very simple are uh, merely overlay analysis okay by just comparing uh uh one future with other futures and getting a new future okay uh, of course many of our uh, um, like uh, information uh, geographical information for geographical research can be derived with the help of overlay okay that's what uh, uh, we can uh, uh, like explore it. we should explore it okay so many times we just like simply ignoring the overlay technique but overlay is very powerful and of course keep in mind that before do any overlay just look at spatially okay just using your naked eye you just look at the data how it is like uh, uh, how can it it can be combined and what kind of interesting information you can able to generate it even you can use uh, raster based this kind of analysis already i told i said uh, with the help of uh, local cell by cell or with the global okay entire area okay so that you can also do it Uh, by pixel by pixel and you can able to model it okay so this kind of model now it's very powerful and coming up a lot to understand uh, the geographical phenomena apart uh, this uh, point pattern and local uh, like uh, statistics or overlay techniques we have one more uh, like area that is called a network analysis this is very powerful now uh, especially for uh, like uh, computing or identifying the interdependency between one spatial area and another spatial area of course during uh, this covid time many people uh, like uh, used this advanced kind of network analysis for understanding the spread of uh, like uh, diseases or spread of like uh, cases uh, with the help of uh, uh, coming up uh, um, uh, hardware and software and development in the Uh, like uh, informatics okay will uh, give us you know, would give us a lot of options for augmented reality three dimensional uh, gis machine learning special data mining 
and even uh, like cloud computing, mobile GIS. Okay, so these are all the next generation applications in addition to uh, yeah, traditional geographical data approaches. Okay. Uh, this newer approach uh, now frequently used are agent based systems, cellular automata and coupling uh, statistical models, stochastic model, empirical models with the GIS. Say for example, I have estimated the soil erosion with the help of uh, like universal soil loss equation and again I coupled uh, the universal soil loss equation and uh, uh, surface runoff on morphometry to understand uh, 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 the location, ideal locations for uh, water harvesting structures. If you take only one model and you will get only like 20-30% um, uh, of precise information whereas if you are coupling uh, like multiple models together and you can like augment the accuracy, you can improve the accuracy so that the information or decision making may be of could be powerful. Grid and cloud it's very important uh, especially after introduction of GE, Google App Engine. Okay. And now you no need to download satellite data and process at your end rather you just like give equations or give your fundamental geographical calculations in coded form into uh, like uh, Google Earth Engine and it will do on the cloud and give you a result in a spatial form. This is very powerful and if you look at most of the like researchers from advanced countries including China come upon this uh, uh, approaches with the help of Google Earth Engine. Google Earth Engine it's one example like we have many many notebooks are there for uh, like this kind of approaches. And we have uh, a paradigm shift we are shifting towards now we call it as a neo geographic information analysis. Okay. Uh, we earlier we had a GIS now we have NGIS. Okay. So that is called big data analytics. Okay, so GIS based big data analytics are a hot topic for many like uh, potential real world problems because majority of the problems already I told initially that uh, the object is not static. It is always dynamic. It is changing over a period of time. Okay. Even the change of rate of change vary from fraction of like seconds to like years or like decades. Okay, uh, many of the real world problems have very dynamic changes. Uh, say for example, uh, traffic. Okay, uh, if Google says uh, by 10:30 you will reach a particular place, uh, but you are reaching by 10:40, you will blame the system. You may not use it. Okay, you need a precise information, okay? which means that you need to handle the real world data again the approaches whatever I said we need a point you know, like a pattern analysis local statistics and we need a network based things all the things you can put together in a server based approach and uh, you will get only the result of what you want okay you are not like doing any analysis your own rather system will do uh, at back end okay of course which required uh, live data collection as well Okay, from a cell phone, uh, all uh, like uh, locations to be captured and it should be stored in a cloud computing, supercomputing. With it should be processed and quickly it should be transmitted uh, to all the users. Okay, so th that is very powerful, like a tool nowadays for like a geographic data. This is one such for understanding uh, uh, the COVID cases, uh, how they handled effectively in China in earlier stage. Uh, uh, just uh, like uh, uh, outbreak just like uh, after very quickly after outbreak because of uh, involving uh, the big data analytics they found and uh, they like isolated Wuhan and they contained uh, contained diseases into that okay it's not completely but still majority of the case spread uh, like uh, stopped because of very real world uh, like analysis okay so what ultimately required one side you have to collect data, one side you have to do a wide variety of analysis and once you like analyze then you have to present it. Then only you can able to generate secondary information okay, that we call it as thematic like layers. Of course 
thematic layers uh, you may be uh, like prepared with the data but for visualization you have to follow our traditional like cartographic principles otherwise uh, you will find a different visualization problems that will uh, hinder the user say for example if you look at this map you could not able to get any information you will confused but whereas the same data is presented like this then you can able to understand more and more information this is the population size the circle size okay and this color says the age structure okay this is young population green color this is active population this is old population you can see the old population spread then active population spread especially in city areas and young population spread in, in the like near the city areas okay you can write a uh, hundred pages of interpretation with the help of this single map okay it is because of not only geographic data collection not only geographic data processing but also because of geographic data visualization this is very important presentation is very important don't go for this kind of rather always aimed at this kind of okay now we have a power of uh, like um, technologies you just couple it and try to like uh, like uh, say for example if you look at uh, the drainage pattern and the topography you can able to understand okay so where you will find uh, uh, what to say more uh, degradation or how why this uh, river is like uh, shifting to this direction and what is the general direction and what are the connections of uh, river streams uh, that this and etc all the things uh, indirectly you can able to inculcate to the reader your ultimacy is just to show uh, only a drainage network but uh, the reader are diversified multi-dimensional they will associate with many and they will like understand or extract many and many information okay so uh, the application of geographic information system or geographic data analysis is limited only by our imagination okay if you come out or if you expand your imagination and you will find the more and more interesting applications i just stop it here these are all just for uh, if you want to augment and your skills towards this you should be a master in all these things you have to uh, develop your intelligence to handle geospatial data or spatial data or geographic data and you should know the methods and tool for generating information from the remote sensing especially from nowadays uav un unmanned like aerial vehicles and after data collection uh, then you have to like extract meaningful information with the help of sql so fundamentals of sql also very important sql will give you only a minimal information if you want to do some advanced analysis whatever i said so far then you need a uh, like a structuring or like a code scripting language called like python and apart all these things you should also have a good communication project management skill okay uh, many of our, our students have this domain but uh, they are lacking here so they have to like know this as well so these are all some like interesting uh, learning resources you can look at for fundamental information i just stop it now and if you have any questions you can ask me thank you very much sir for your uh, delightful session because now geography has been changing previously it was it was uh, dealing with the description of the earth later shifted to map making and now geography became the science of decision making so in that connection you have focused uh, you have del delivered very focused lecture and i am sure it will enlighten to all the participants now may i call to all the participants uh, that if you have any query or any doubts or if you require any further clarification uh, please feel free to ask questions dr bala subramanni uh, he will very happy to answer your questions yes of course most of the participants are students so they ask question through chat box also yeah yeah okay it's welcome and i'm sorry i don't know whether i 
attend uh, your uh, like uh, understanding or your expectation because uh, the topic given to me it's uh, like uh, very unique and of course it required a uh, lot of background information okay so until uh, you know until or otherwise you know the geographic uh, data characteristics and collection methods and uh, like utilizing tools you can't perform any geographical data analysis okay so it required uh, like information before my lecture as well as after my lecture so just try to connect all the lectures okay so so that's what i focused okay my lecture should uh, like just open your eyes it's not ex like explaining a particular concept in a deeper manner i'm not trying for okay? and you rather you i want to show the holistic the and holistic even, yes uh, yeah even it was not expected because geographic data analysis uh, is a big thing and uh, there are different techniques to analyze the data it depends upon the research topic and in which branch the research is, uh, researcher is willing to uh, carry out the research work it depends upon but you have explained sir very well because uh, uh, in any branch either it is political geography physical geography medical geography or the uh, recent developments like gender geography uh, all the analysis depends on either point line or polygon yeah these are the three basic components yes, yes. i i can say these uh, these are the special units of investigations and on based on these elements only uh, a geographer need to carry out his research work and in that connection sir uh, it was very delightful sessions uh, all the participants have appreciated your session and uh, there are no further questions so i think uh, they might have understood all the conceptual background so i would like to move towards concluding session and uh, sir uh, on behalf of all the organizing institutions all the collaborating departments of geography because this workshop is being organized uh, throughout through uh, five colleges throughout the india department of geography from five colleges throughout the india and there are 570 participants have been registered for this course and most of the participants uh, are attending uh, youtube session previously we were broadcasting youtube live but uh, feel that there may be certain difficulties sometimes so uh, a recorded version of this lecture will be made available uh, within half an hour after the session uh, and uh, approximately 50 to 70 participants attend the interactive session. It, it depends upon the weather condition and uh, the network issue at the network connectivity at the end of the participants. On behalf of all the collaborating institutions, on behalf of all the participants, uh, I extend my heartfelt thanks to you uh, for sharing your valuable time and enlightening the participants how to consider point line polygon features or um, any um, other basic techniques uh, for the analysis of data and i hope uh, your lecture might have uh, not hope i am sure that your lecture have created a ground for the data analysis so once again, thank you, sir, uh, for uh, sharing your valuable time and accepting our invitation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you, much, sir. sir. Thank you. And thanks. Thanks to all for patient listening. And my email ID with uh, sir 